Welcome to a video tutorial of Auction RPM. My name is Dan Zumwalt and I'll be your guide through this Settings and Defaults video. Auction RPM is a very configurable program. Our philosophy is that we want the program to bend itself around you and your company. We don't want you to have to change all of your policies and procedures in order to accommodate a new program. To that end, there is a feature built into Auction RPM called Settings and Defaults. From the main menu that we're looking at here, we're going to click on Tools, and then we'll click on Settings and Defaults. Now, once we go into Settings and Defaults, you'll notice 10 buttons going across the bottom of the screen. They are Company Definitions, mes Message Settings, Required Fields, Accounting, Miscellaneous, Email Settings, Print Settings, web settings, subsystems, and imaging. To get a good idea as to what a settings and defaults is all about, I'm going to click on miscellaneous. When I do, you'll notice that there are a myriad of checkboxes here that turn on certain systems, turn off certain systems. For instance, let's go to the data entry settings, still under miscellaneous settings. You'll notice that under data entry settings, there's a checkbox here for enable spell check system. If this is checked, then any descriptions that you enter into the various description fields in Auction RPM will be checked for spelling to make sure that your spelling is correct. This checkbox here is entitled Show DL Verification Screen in Bid Registration. Suppose you were using a MagStrip reader or a 2D barcode reader during bid registration in order to read a person's driver's license and thus quickly register the person and during bid registration. Well, by checking this checkbox here, Auction RPM will pop up a screen that will verify with you the information that it just read off the driver's license. Thus, your bidder registration clerk can verify whether or not that information is correct or perhaps maybe the person has moved. If I go over here to taxation settings, here are settings that indicate whether or not we're even going to show the tax one ta on the bid entry quick grid or whether or not inventory records will automatically default to tax one taxable. Well, that's something that certainly can be changed at any time, but normally in cases of where you have an auction that uh, where you are charging tax, Usually you're just going to be charging one tax, which is a sales tax, and you're going to assign that sales tax rate to tax one in the schedule and auction screen. If you want most of your inventory to be taxable whenever you enter it in, then you're going to want to make sure that this check mark is checked. Bid entry settings has several settings over here that directly affect whether or not uh, certain things happen or don't happen during the uh, process of entering in bids in Auction RPM. For instance, notice there's a check mark here entitled Validate Bidder Number in Bid Entry. When you enter in bids into the bid entry screens, do you want Auction RPM to make sure that the bidder number that you've entered in is a person that has registered in Auction RPM? If so, then you're going to want to check that check mark. If not, then you would turn off this check mark. Now you may be wondering, why would I not want to validate bidder numbers when they're entered in on bids? Well, in some cases, you might find where people are waiting in line to register by the time the auction is ready to start. Well, if a person is waiting in line to register, that means they're not in there bidding, and that would be bad. So, what you can do is you can have the person come in, just sign something on a piece of paper indicating that they agree to the terms and conditions. You would hand them a bidder number, and then they would go in, sit down, and start bidding. In that circumstance, perhaps you haven't had a chance to record the actual registration of that bidder number in Auction RPM, but they may start winning bids in there. If that's the case, they may be winning a bid with a certain bidder number that is a valid bidder number, but Auction RPM doesn't know yet that it's a valid better number. If that's ever the case, then you're going to want to make sure that this check mark is turned off here. If I move on to print settings down here at the bottom, you can see that this is a spot in the program where you can identify what printer you want your reports to go to. If you want Auction RPM to print bidder cards, then 
here is where you set the printer that those bidder cards would be produced. If I go to label settings, and it's self-explanatory when it goes to print mailing labels for your buyers, here's where you can set the different spacings for the different types of labels that could be printed. If I go to the check designer, this is where you can design the checks that Auction RPM would produce and actually print out if in fact you were printing the checks to your consigner straight from Auction RPM. In here you would identify what pieces of information would be shown on the checks with these check boxes here. And then here on the example check, you would drag around the pieces of information so that they're properly located and so that the information and the check can be printed out correctly. Uh, one more place, we'll stop off at company definitions and you can see this is where you're going to enter in your address, city, state, zip, phone number, and even your company logo. If you happen to be an auctioneer in Canada or in Australia, you can identify that you are such. If you'll notice, there are links here for explanations as to how this changes auction RPM and the way it operates. Most of the changes have to do with PEX calculations. Well, we invite you to look at the different areas of the uh, settings and default system and get familiarized with how these different settings can directly affect the way you work. The fact, though, is that you're not going to be going in and out of settings and defaults on a daily basis. Usually, once you get your settings set the way you want them to be, then you probably won't be visiting settings and defaults very much. More often than not, what will happen is you will call our offices and say, let's say I, would, I want a new or a second copy of the invoice to print out whenever I print an invoice. And so we'll tell you, go into Settings and Defaults, go to Print Settings, go to Invoices and Catalogs, and then go to Invoice Page Definitions, wherein you can add an invoice page that may have a watermarked message in the background that says Accounting. In that case, it'll print out a second copy of the invoice that'll have in very large letters, but faded into the background, the word accounting. And so we'll tell you what kind of changes to make in settings and defaults. Once we've made all of our changes in the settings and default screen, we'll hit exit here. It'll, it'll ask whether or not we want to save those changes. We'll answer yes. And after answering yes, it'll save those changes and return us back to the main menu. Well, this concludes our tutorial of the settings and default system. If you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to give us a call at the Symmetric Software uh, offices. And our phone number is 209-588-1232. Thanks for listening.